Welcome back to our WordPress tutorial series put on by the UCF College of Sciences web department. Please note this tutorial covers WordPress 3.9 and versions that appear and function in a similar way. Check out the menu on the right where you can click to view the full video series playlist. You can also click to view the previous video and the next videos in the series. In this video we're going to be covering the WordPress media library. More specifically the library overview, adding items to the media library, and the built-in WordPress image editor. If you want to jump ahead to one of those sections at any time, please click on one of the links below. All right, so let's get started. As you can see, I already have the WordPress dashboard pulled up here. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and click on the media button. And this is going to bring up our library, showing a list of all the different items that we've uploaded with the most recently uploaded at the top. And we do have a couple filters, just as we've seen in the post and pages section. But these filters are a little different. With this 2014 theme, it's going to allow me to view all, just images, which would be JPEGs, PNGs, and GIFs, or unattached items. Now, you may be wondering what unattached or attached items, what's the difference there? Well, anytime you upload an item to the media library, it will check to see if you're doing so from within a post or from within a page. If you are doing it from within one of those two, it will go ahead and automatically associate that library item with the post or the page, which you can see here. We have a couple items that were associated with the welcome page and a couple items that were associated with the hello world post. The new user account picture was uploaded directly to the media library from this page by clicking add new here. And because it was done so directly, it isn't attached to anything. If I wanted to go ahead and associate it with a post or a page, I can click on attach. This is gonna pull up a list of all my different posts or pages, and I can click on one of them and then click select here. And then that's gonna go ahead and update that and associate this new user picture with the welcome page. Okay, from here, you can hover over the title and you'll see a couple options here. We have edit, delete permanently, and view. To get to the edit screen, you can either click on the title or click on the word edit. Permanently delete will delete permanently. There is no trash can system here, so please be careful um, when you're deleting items because it is permanent. Um, but don't be afraid of deleting items. If you delete some posts or pages, it's not gonna automatically delete associated images or documents or anything like that. So periodically, you're gonna wanna come back here and go through your media library, maybe clean it up, getting rid of some different items. Um, this will help keep your media library organized and also keep whoever's hosting your WordPress install a little happy because you're keeping it a little smaller. From here, we have the view button. And if I click on this, this is going to view, this view is going to bring up what's called an attachment page. And the attachment pages can look differently depending on the theme. And this really isn't that useful, honestly. Um, but all it really does is it shows you the title. If it's an image, it shows you the image and then gives you some more information like the date it was uploaded, um, the dimensions, or different things like that. So I'm going to come back here. And let's go ahead and show an example of what adding a new item to the media library what the steps are and what that looks like similar to other things with wordpress the add item and edit item will look pretty similar just maybe with a couple different variations but let's go ahead and click add new we can either do that from the media library directly where i'm at and click this add new button i can do it from the add new which is underneath media over here or I can click on the new button and then media from the WordPress admin bar up at the top on either the back end or even the front end here by hovering over new and clicking on media as well. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is going to bring up our upload new media box. If we're using a newer browser, which I definitely recommend for security reasons like Chrome or Firefox or Safari, um, you'll have this drop file so this is a drag and drop where you can drag and drop directly under the browser um, internet explorer does this but only with newer versions like version 10 or version 11 um, but generally i just find that wordpress works a little easier with uh, firefox or chrome so let's go ahead and show an example of this if for some reason the drag and drop interface isn't working for you or if you're stuck 
with a legacy device that has an older version that doesn't support it, you can just click on select files and that'll bring up a traditional dialog box where you can navigate to wherever your files are at and you can manually add those that way. On this page though, you will see what the maximum upload file size is according to your WordPress install and your hosting. Um, our default one is eight megabytes. If you do need that to be bigger, like 16 or 32 or something like that, um, if you run your own server, you can manually update that yourself. If you don't and you're hosted through an, uh, another service, you're just gonna need to contact them and see if they can increase that for you. So let me go ahead and drag an image on here and show you what the process looks like. All right, well, I hope you didn't blink because it's done. So I dragged this computer icon on here and it went ahead and uploaded it. So let's click on edit and we'll see what the editing screen looks like. Okay, so this is what the edit screen looks like. Um, we have the title up at the top here. Let me go ahead and stop for a second. Um, as we mentioned with posts and pages, it's really important what you name your files, especially with your media library, because you're gonna be searching for these later on. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a good title, like a good descriptive title, um, when, especially with images that are taken with a cell phone or professional camera, you might get something that's just a random smattering of letters and numbers that works as far as the camera is concerned, but as far as human readability and for your other users who are maintaining or editing your WordPress site, you're gonna to wanna to change that either before you upload or after you upload to something that's more readable. Um, and definitely take out any dashes or things like that uh, so when you search for it, it'll be easier to find. So in this case, it was pretty good to go. I, I did my job correctly. I, I named it something a little user-friendly, so it's just called Recommended Computers. Below that, we have the permalink. And normally the permalink is the link that you wanna give out to people or that you wanna put on a page or put on a post. But in this case, it's, it's just for that attachment page. It's not for the actual image by itself. So in this case, stay away from the permalink. You're gonna wanna come over here and use file URL directly, especially if you're trying to insert a document into a page, whether it's a PDF or Word doc or something like that you're definitely gonna to wanna to use file URL instead of permalink. Below that, if it's an image, you're going to have a preview of what the image looks like. And if it's an image, you will have access to the built-in WordPress editor by clicking edit image. We'll get to that in just a second though. Below that, there will be a spot for caption, which when you insert this image on a page, will list any text that you have here below it. Below that for images, we have alternate text. And this is gonna be for if you're, if you're someone who uses a screen reader or if you're a search engine and you want to know what the image actually is of, you're gonna to wanna to type out a description of what the image is because browsers and search engines can't yet figure out what images are of, but one day, give it time. And then below that, there's a spot for description, which is great for you if you needed to put some detailed information uh, for your reference for what this image was about or something like that. Most themes really don't use this, so this is just something for your own edification. Then over here on the right, we have our save box, which is expandable and collapsible. And in here, we have when it was uploaded, the file URL, which once again is the one you're gonna wanna copy if you ever need to insert and you're not using the nice built-in system. Um, then we have the original file name, the file type, file size, and dimensions. File size and dimensions are gonna come in handy if you're having any, any issues inserting uh, a picture or something onto a page. You might wanna come back here and be like, okay, well maybe it's too big, like file size wise, or it's too big in its dimensions. Then below that, we do have delete permanently and update. So if I go ahead and, and if I had made any changes, I could just click update and it would go ahead and update those. And then a couple things to go over from this page as well. We do have a bulk action. We don't really have bulk actions even though it says it. Um, we have delete permanently. So if I wanted to get rid of a whole page of these, I could just check that, hit delete permanently and apply and that would do that. We can filter them down by the date they were uploaded as well. 
Um, we do have our search bar over here that will let us search for based on that good title we gave it or possibly the description or caption. Um, then up here we do have our screen options and help buttons, which are relative to the area we're at. So that is relative to the media library. This will let me turn on and off a couple different columns here. So if I wanted to turn off author, uploaded to, comments, or date, uh, I could do so that pretty easily. I also have the ability to change the number of items that show up before I have to click on next page, like go to page two or page three or something. And then in the help, we have just some basic helpful information about an overview of this area, some available actions, and some information about attaching files. And as always, we do have some links to documentation on the WordPress site and to the support forums if you need it. All right, so now we're gonna go into the photo editor. And once again, the photo editor is a great built-in tool that'll let you do some basic editing. Um, if you need anything outside of this, you're gonna have to download either a free to use program or maybe something a little bit more heavy duty like Photoshop or something like that, where you can make your changes and then either re-upload them into WordPress or upload them initially. So let me go ahead and click on, maybe I'll click on this image. We'll hit edit. And then from here, it'll show me what the original image looks like. And then I'll come down to edit image. And once this page loads, it'll give me a smaller view of the image, just so for reference purposes when I make some changes. And then it has the title up at the top, and then it has this row of icons that will let me do the basic editing. So right now I have crop, rotate counterclockwise, clockwise, then flip the picture vertically or horizontally. And then I have undo and redo buttons if I want to toggle back and forth between the changes I've just made. Below the image, I have the save button, which will let me commit those changes. After you hit save, um, it will save those changes and then come back out to the, it'll take you outside of the editor and you have to click edit image to get back in there. Over here on the right, we have scale image. And you see this little question mark here. If you click on this, it's gonna give you some more information about this. Um, what scaling the image will do is will let you proportionally shrink it down to a different size. Um, despite what TV and movies try to tell you, you can't go up. You can't scale up bigger than what your original dimensions more. Um, you can't create something out of nothing here. So you can always scale it down. And the good thing with this is it will automatically calculate the other number for you so you don't have to try to remember you know, some of that middle school or high school math about cross multiplication. So if I wanted to shrink this down to, let's say, 1,000 pixels, um, this first spot here is for width. The second spot is for height. So I'll type in 1,000. It automatically calculated the height for me. And then I can click on Scale. And the image has been saved. And you can see here now my original dimensions say 1000 by 1483. And we have a new box that has shown up and that is the restore original image box. So anytime you go ahead and make changes to your original image through the photo editor, WordPress is gonna be nice and create a backup of the original for you. So if I screwed up and I wanted to roll back to that original one, I can always come back here and click on restore image. And then we have the image crop box and this has to do with the image crop tool over here. When I went through these real quick, I forgot to mention that the WordPress crop tool is grayed out by default until you actually tell it an area you wanna crop. So to do that, we're going to click and drag our mouse, creating a box here over the area that we want to crop. And now WordPress will light up that crop tool box for me and I can click on that and that will crop the image for me. If I hit undo, I can show you another feature as well. So if I drag this out, I can come over here and I can designate, say I'm not so good at creating a perfectly square box on here, but I know that I want the crop to be a one-to-one -one ratio, you know, as many pixels wide as it is tall. So I could come over here to aspect ratio and type that in, type that in one-to-one, -one, and it's gonna automatically change that so now my 
crop box is a one-to-one -one representation for me. If I wanted to manually adjust um, what the the pixels are, so if I knew that, hey, in my theme, I need for a specific thing, like a, a header image or something like that, I needed to be 500 by 250, I could type out, oops, type 500 by 250, and that'll go ahead and shrink that down for me to the exact size and if I drag the bottom one of the corners here, that'll let me do that proportionally. Could do something like that. So if I wanted to do 500 by 250 again, I could do that and then come up here, hit crop, and that would change it down to that proportion for me. Let me go ahead and undo that again. So we're back to our original. And then below that, we have thumbnail settings, which has to do with the, that crop tool we were just messing around with. So anytime we use the crop tool, we could actually tell WordPress if we wanted, hey, apply that crop, but only to, I could say, to all the image sizes, just to the thumbnail, or to all the sizes except the thumbnail. Now you may be wondering, well, what do I mean by all image sizes there? Don't we just have the one image? Well. If you remember back from the settings video, WordPress will automatically create four different images for you. You have the original image, you have a thumbnail image, you have a medium sized image, and if it's big enough, it'll do the large image for you. So just as a reminder, you go to settings and then media, and this is gonna pull up the settings page which will let you define what you want those sizes to be. So thumbnail will be a one-to-one -one ratio of 150 by 150 pixels. Uh, medium size will either be a max width of 300 pixels or a max height of 300 pixels. Large will be a max width of 1024 or max height of 1024. So that's just what it means when it says all image sizes. So if I go back, just as an example, say I want to update, um, the thumbnail. So I see the thumbnail is kind of cutting off. What if I wanted the thumbnail at the top? You can see it's kind of cutting off the word anthropology there. And that's because when it creates the thumbnail, it does so from the middle of the image, not from the top and not from the bottom. But if I wanted to designate that, I could say, hey, make this a one to one. Make it, uh, let's say a thousand by a thousand, just to make it easy. Okay, or 997 because it it wants to be a little difficult so we'll drag this up this is still one-to-one -one, so this will still work for my thumbnail I can hit crop okay and then before I hit save I can go ahead and click thumbnail and then click s save now you'll see it backed out and well, I don't see that perfect square anymore, but that's because we only wanted to apply it to the thumbnail. So if we go back in, click on edit image, we'll see that our thumbnail has been updated with that crop we just did to perfectly get the spot that we wanted. And that's pretty much it for the basic WordPress editor that's built in for photos. Um, we will have some more information later on the actual WordPress editor where you can insert images into a page or into a post and do some extra features like, well, what do you want them to link to? Do you want, how do you want the text and the other parts of the page to interact with the items from the media library? So that'll be covered in an extensive video on the WordPress editor. So hope that you've learned something and you're gonna be a media pro now, maybe editing some videos or just being really good at keeping everything organized. So like this video and keep an eye out for the other videos in this section. Thanks a lot.